Hello everybody, it's Clay Pigeon. We're here in Union Square Park in New York City for this edition of The Dusty Show. And we're also on video, which is absolutely uh, new to WFMU from what I understand. I'm here with cameraman Eric and Ruth's doing sound and station manager Ken is here. And for the next hour, we're just gonna wing it. So let's start by talking to this gentleman who agreed to help us out. How you doing, Kyle? Pretty good, brother. How are you? I'm doing great. Kyle, uh, where are you from? I'm uh, from uh, Belmore, New Jersey. From Belmore, New Jersey. Jersey. Where's that at? Uh, in, Monmouth County. In Monmouth County. Do you love New Jersey? I love New Jersey. What do you love about New Jersey, Kyle? The tomatoes. The tomatoes. tomatoes. No Jersey. one's ever said that to me in like Jersey. six or seven years. Jersey fresh. Jersey tomatoes, huh? We're right there on a Montgomery Street in Jersey City. Ever spend any time in Jersey City? No, not too much. No. no. What brings you here to Manhattan today, to Union Square Park? I work down here now, laying a little tile, working in the buildings. Laying tile? Yeah. Is that a union job? Yes, it is. You're a union member? Union worker. Do you feel like those unions are under attack a little bit these days? Uh, ours isn't, thank goodness. But a couple of them are. Chris yeah. Christie and the teachers over there in New Jersey. Right. right. Are you optimistic about the way we're headed in America, Kyle? Uh, I'm, I'm an optimistic person. Are you? Yeah. You seem like a nice guy. Yeah, I, would, I always go forward. You yeah. Know, never backwards, but sometimes the world takes a different turn. You don't get the best of people all the time. How old are you, can I ask? I'm 35. 35 years old. What's your dream for the future? You want to keep laying tile or you got a dream beyond that? Yeah. I do I have a couple of dreams, but first and, and foremost, I'd like to tell you that uh, naturally, I have a little family, right? Small house, and just live life. I want to die by the sea in Ireland. In Ireland, are you Irish? A little Irish. Have yeah. you ever been there? Yes, twice. You love Ireland? Yeah. Yeah. What, what's your last name? I got to know now. McDublin. It's McDublin. 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 Wow. Yeah. So, uh, you got a son, a daughter? No, not yet. No, oh, you want to have a family. Mama Are said, you in love? Do you have a special person in your life? Love's a tricky, that's a tricky one. You got one right now? Yeah, I got one. What's her name? Her name is uh, Caroline. Look into that camera now and send out a message to Caroline. A message of love. Caroline, we're going we're gonna to be all right in a minute. You I'll have take, a, go, Keep going. I'll take care of you. Trust me. Are you, are you struggling a bit with Caroline? I sense yeah, some emotion. Yeah, yeah. we're but it's yeah. alright. You love her, don't you? I'll never let go. Don't ever let go, man. Don't ever let go. Give me a hug, brother. Yeah. It's gonna be all right, Kyle. Yeah. Say, say uh, let's walk over. You, you like this band over here? Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, there's an Americana band. We're gonna walk over and check them out. So thank you, Kyle. You're welcome. Bro. Let me give you my my card. I got one somewhere. Clay Pigeon, The Dusty Show, every Thursday night at 6 p.m. I hope you'll tune in, and good luck with Caroline, man. Right on, bro. Gonna be okay? Yeah, no doubt about it. I think you're a strong guy. Strong man. All right, let's go check out the band. Good Thanks, people. Kyle. You guys be good. We will. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Kyle. One more shake. Yes, sir. Good man. Come on, nice. guys. That was Kyle. We're off to a good start here on the Dusty Show. It's visual. Look at the camera following me. And here's the band. They're just waiting on us. Hello guys, what's hey, your name? Man. Eli, Eli Bridges. Eli? Yeah. I'm Titus. Titus? I'm Tim. And Tim, Eli, Titus, and Tim. Are you guys New Yorkers? Where are you from? Uh, well, I'm from Georgia. Originally, Originally from, from, uh, from Atlanta, from Delonica, from Atlanta area. Atlanta? Yeah, yeah Marietta. Oh, that, and that's where you got the uh, bluegrass roots probably. I guess so, yeah. Have you been out there in, uh, in the Alla Appalachians and played some music down there? No, we've never gotten the chance to go down and play. Yeah. Now, uh, where are you from? I'm from Southwest Georgia. From Southwest Georgia, yeah, uh, yeah. what's that like, Valdosta? Uh, no, it's a little bit north of Valdosta. Um, little town called Leesburg. I think in 2010 we got 2,000 people. That was a big deal. And are you a, a Georgian too? Uh, no, I'm from Western Massachusetts. <laughs> from Western, yeah. from Worcester. Where from are you Worcester, from? No, no, I'm from a little town called Northfield. From Northfield. Yeah, How did yeah, you guys yeah. hook up? Uh, what did that happen? Oh, Craigslist. You did? Yeah, Craigslist. Yeah, Craigslist. Oh, but uh, it was actually. Uh, a band that we had and we were looking for a drummer and he put on an ad so we had him play with us and it was a fit. So now you're playing the washboard. Yeah, I'm playing the washboard. Do you buy a washboard as a musical instrument these days or is it still sold as a washing implement? It 
sold as a washing implement. What's wild is that you can't find them in stores anymore. I had to go online and get it, but they're still cheap and they still wash clothes really well too. Well, you guys, and I keep talking into this microphone, but I actually have a lavalier. I don't have to, I don't have to talk. I'm totally confused. Uh, did you guys play like other kinds of music before the Americana thing kind of fired up and everybody started liking it? Or is this where you come from? Um, Do you got an electric guitar? Do you have a fuzz box? No, uh, yeah, no. I actually started out playing gospel. I played uh, drums and uh, bass guitar in church back when I was a wee thing. And then uh, in college, I guess we sort of got into more Americana roots music. Yeah, that's when we started playing yeah. together. You've been playing. I, I've been playing. I used to play a lot of punk rock back in, uh, back in high you? school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all punk. You got an electric stuff. guitar? Yes, I do. What do you got? An SG? What I, do you got? No, no, I literally love SGs. Uh, those Gibsons are fine. fine. No, I have a, a Mexican Stratocaster. Do you ever wish you, yeah. even now, do you wish you had that Marshall behind you and you could are just, you kidding? Get, you know, wow, wow. Yeah, man. Get the cops around here, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I see this on your guitar. Uh, d does Woody Guthrie inform what you're doing at all? He, oh, totally. he, he liked to have the this guitar kills fascists or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. Woody Guthrie, I'm, I'm not. I don't know much about the man himself, but uh, I do know a lot of his songs, and uh, I, I love the fact that he just, he never really had a home, like, you know, the USA was his home, you know, so, uh, so yeah, I, I really like, uh, I don't know, music is a form of shelter, you know, and it can be a shelter for many others, so. Hey like guys, uh, you're from Georgia, now we, we're hearing a lot in the news about the crazy gun laws in Georgia, that it, almost anyone could have a gun and take it anywhere, what do you think about that? Yeah. You know, actually, in my hometown, um, I think there's a little blue law that it's actually mandatory to own a gun. Every house. It's mandatory. Yeah, you've, you. I mean, it's not enforced or anything. Nobody, nobody yeah, yeah. takes it up. But it's a funny thing. It's very low crime rate actually in that town. Um, but and, I, yeah. And, and for you, you mentioned the gospel influences. Are are you still a Christian? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Like um, like sometimes like we play uh, pray before uh sets or gigs and then all after, of you are you christians know. i'm not no, no. hey it's so, just yeah. uh, not so so typical these days to see a young person step up and, and profess their religion like that so i respect yeah, you yeah yeah oh thank you yeah, yeah yeah i haven't been to church in years you know you're I'm a backslider man so uh so uh, uh tell me the name of your of your group uh, actually you're trying to think of one this no no we're, this, this we're actually two different groups we're um, two to, yeah we do Roots and Americana. We're the Good Morning Nags. And this is, I guess, I, have a, I, I do a, a solo project called Skipper. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we find you guys online? Yeah, you exactly. can find Skipper, uh, uh, let's see, skipper1.bandcamp.com uh, is my music. Okay. And these guys. And uh, if you look us up on Facebook or Twitter, we're the Good Morning Nags. The Good Morning Nags. Can we hear you guys play a little something? Sure, and then, sure. uh, Thanks a lot for your time. All the best to of you. Course, we may wander, you know, how this uh, tight uh, editing is in the modern world. We yeah, may wander yeah. away, but we're going to give you a shot here. Sure. There's the camera. Here's the microphone. Do it, guys. Okay, Let's right. hear from you. This is uh, Dan Hicks and Hot Licks. Oh, oh, Dan Hicks. I like it. Yeah, Striking yeah, it rich. Yeah. Man. Here we go, man.
We are back at Union Square Park in this first ever filmed endeavor on FMU, trying to bring it to you live, not only over the radio waves, but over the, uh, over the, uh, I was going to call it TV. It's not exactly TV, the internet, I guess you could say. It's a modern world, isn't it, Jamie? Yeah, the YouTube sphere or something like that. Now, I spotted you right away. Is this, is this a derby or some kind of uh, altered derby? I call it my shred bowler. I use it for snowboarding. People always wonder how it stays on. I joke, I say, I put spirit gum on in the morning before I go out on the slopes. Do you really? No. <laughs> now, is this, is this a jacquard a jacket? I'm not sure. I got it at a thrift store. It's my smoking jacket, and I just like it. It's is it do you wear this often? Is it kind of your, 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 you know, on Saturday Night Fever when he puts the outfit on and goes out into the city? Is this what makes you feel like Sometimes. who you want to be? Most of the time, it's just comfortable. and. It's like not too hot, not too cold. It's kind of the perfect thing to wear. You said you're an FMU fan. I am. What? what when did you start listening to FMU? Oh, I can't even remember. Years ago, FMU, and I went to Fordham, so um, you know, WFUV is also the FUV. Yeah, exactly. It's the yeah. oldest college radio station in the country. I actually worked there when I was in now, college. You, you just got back from a snowboarding adventure I in a Utah, right? I went to Utah and also Squaw Valley in California, and I got 11 days of snowboarding in on a. It was supposed to be a week-long trip, but I ended up extending and extending, so it turned into a month. Aside from that, man, what's your passion in life? What are you looking to achieve? What really floats your boat? Creativity, art, manifesting cool stuff. You good paint, types. you draw, you make music, you do it all. Yeah. Um, You're in a renaissance of, man. Yeah. In terms of art, I'm more of a carpenter, and I like to do finished work and, and build cool structures that last. I do paint and sculpt, um, but I'm more of a musician. Are you so, in love? I am, actually. I'm in love with a particular individual and with life, so yeah. Can you I'll say a name? Ella. Ella. Yeah. Can you look in that camera and, and tell Ella how much she means to you? Ella, you are a doll. I love you. You're the sweetest little thing I could imagine. What is it about Ella that uh, sends you? Um, I think her innocence, actually. When she's really happy, she glows. How old are you? I'm 45. How old is Ella? She's 30. 45 and 30. Does that age gap ever cause problems? Communication? Well, does she know about the Beatles? Does she just yeah, talk about wings or how does she's that She's like older, wise beyond her years, but you know, there's this kind of cradle robbing guilt that I've experienced sometimes. And she Have you seems, met her parents? Oh yeah. yeah. Do um, they like you? Oh yeah. And um, well, you know, I've talked to my friends and they said it's totally legit and it's legit. I mean, we've been seeing each other for almost seven years now. So at this point, you know, if we're not, it's not legit, I don't know what to Are say. you a poet or a songwriter? I'd say my number one skill is writing. Uh, writing fiction? 
Um, yeah, well, just free expression and creative writing. Is there a passage you remember that you could share with us? A couple of sentences that where you felt like it, you really connected with it? Sure. Look right into that camera. Let's come closer. I, I, want, I like the thought that we're very intimate here, that we're really, you could almost see our breath fogging up the lens. It's special. So, do you believe in happiness and laughter and joyfulness and playfulness and sweet, wonderful things? Can't you see that everything's inside of everything? Haven't you heard, you must have heard from age to age, the bright ones sing. What it is, is happiness, is laughter, is joyfulness, is playfulness, is sweet, wonderful things. What it ain't, it ain't despair, it ain't misery, because misery loves company. Don't you want to be free from fear? Because nothing ain't nothing. In fact, nothing touches something. And something's connected to everything. Haven't you heard, you must have heard from age to age, the bright ones sing. This is what life is all about. You're a talented man. I have my moments. That was fantastic. Well, thank you. What's your message of peace and love to our listeners on WFMU? Um, I don't know if I'm important enough to have a message of peace and love. You are, you are. But if I was so important, it would be chill out. You're missing a really great moment. <laughs> Radio handshake, my friend. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Right on. Can we watch uh, how you walk as you, as you sashay away? I'm a little bit crippled from my snowboarding adventure, but sure, why not? Okay, here he is. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Jamie. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, wait, here's my card. Here you go. Yeah. Every Thursday at 6, it's the Dusty Show on today's WFMU. Promise you'll be a chronic listener now. I'll listen to it for sure. And if it's the Dusty Show, you should maybe come to Burning Man. There's lots of dust there. Yes. Thank you, man. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> what kind of dust? Fire dust. Oh, okay, okay. All right, man. There he goes. That was Jamie. Now, Ken's here. Ken, come on in for a second. Station manager Ken is with me. I can't stop talking into this. They can take this for a yeah, minute. There's this your is mic a guest microphone. Are we working now? Yeah, now we're working. We're sorry that we got a late start there. It, it, everything was working fine up until the moment we started. Now, if we move, are we going to have problems? Do we have to stay stationary? Who the hell knows? This guy right here. Yeah. Would you speak with us on WFMU just for a moment? Yeah, WFMU. We're a radio station. In Jersey City. It's our first ever public, broadcast. Public radio station. Oh, it's nothing much. Nothing, nothing, nothing inflammatory. Much. We're, we're very not, friendly. Yeah, we're not going to hurt you. You look friendly. Yeah, we're we, very we are friendly. friendly. He's friendlier than I am. I'm not so friendly. But yeah. I don't know. I'll he's really, I got to get really between friendly. you and him because okay. things could happen. Now, what's your name? I don't. Oh, you're, you make Brett. something My up. Make something. Brett. Brett, are you a native New Yorker? No. Where are you from originally? From Pennsylvania. I think we broadcast into into Pennsylvania. We have towers all over the yeah, place. Near Milford. Near Milford. Are you from Pittsburgh, Philadelphia? Pittsburgh area. Pittsburgh. How does, uh, we look right over here. I don't know if the camera can get a shot. There's an ornate building, a block down. And then there on the corner, you see the angled building face. That's Andy Warhol's uh, old factory. Yeah, yeah. Andy Warhola from I know, Pittsburgh. I know Andy Warhol. I know, I know a cousin. Of Andy, of Andy Warhol. Uh, from Pittsburgh or since you've been Pittsburgh. here? Pittsburgh. No, no, no. Let me ask you, if you come from Pittsburgh, are you very proud of that Warhol uh, heritage? I would be, I think. Actually, you know, I, when I saw the movie about Edie, I didn't think it was reflecting very favorably on him. You thought he was a little exploitative, maybe, of some of his uh, people around him? And yet, you couldn't deny his impact on the culture, certainly. Yeah. Now look at you. You look great, man. You, you got a great, we both have fantastic hair, really, if it was to be admitted. Nice clothes. What do you do here in the city? I work you, you, in little research company. Uh, what kind of market research? Behavioral research. Yeah. How is my behavior? If it's you very nice. It's very good me, behavior. It's okay? Yeah, fine, yeah. No uh, problems underneath the surface no, that you're I, seeing? No, I wouldn't. I Are wouldn't. my pupils changing sizes, no. dilating or anything? Yeah. Are you nervous, just frankly, being on the radio? Yeah. What do you, what do you but, feel? But besides that, that's not radio. That's it's camera. That, well, this is our first ever attempt at uh, bringing visuals to our radio okay. broadcast. Well, that's good. Okay. What's your message of peace and love to the listeners of WFMU? Have no. you heard of the station? Is no. it part of your regular no, listening diet? No, I don't diet? listen to the radio. You don't? When did you stop? Uh, five or six years ago. And you started uh, the internet? Yeah. What do you listen to? I, I'd uh, love to guess. The Smiths, maybe. You look kind of like Moz. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah. a little Morrissey thing um, with you. you know, the usual alternative radio stuff. Is there yes. a guilty pleasure, a fog hat or something that lurking in your past? Steppenwolf, anything? No. 
Now we've got an emergency. I'm going to a classical music rehearsal. You are? Yeah. We're just going to keep you maybe 15 or 20 more minutes here. Minutes? So minutes? Oh, hold on. It's part of the excitement of New York, the ambiance that you see, and we hope wish that person well. I'm really not going to keep you. Uh, but that message, I kind of cut you off. What do you want to say? Look right into that camera. Yeah, I, I, I feel that, you know, there's a lot that's not being seen or heard on any media, including the alternative media. And for me, it's about money and understanding the money system. And I'm really serious about that. About politics no, and about money talking, and politics? No, I'm talking about the way the banking system works and how it affects all of our lives. And I'm really Speak passionate. Speak to that a little bit. Go I've ahead. been in it for 20 years myself. Before I had this hair, I had short hair. And I worked downtown. And, um, on Wall Street? I had to leave that because I was really, just really disgusted. Were you sympathetic to the Occupy people? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. I did a lot of coverage of Occupy yeah. Wall Street. Yeah, I think that they need to get back out here, but a lot more people need to join them. And I'm telling you, the money thing needs to really be fixed in this country. And I will advise everyone to go back and read Farley Grubb's account of the 1787 Constitutional Convention. People, I'm telling you, you really, we've really got to get back to basics in this country because we've been living in a fog. Our parents and our grandparents gave us far too much affluence, why regardless. Are we, why of, are we complacent? I don't know, is it but the we internet? need to change it now. I don't care why. I just we just need to change it now. But people need to know what to do. They need to, to read. Do they Farley need to get their rubs. boots on the ground. I'm going to finish my statement. I'm going to am go. I interrupting? Yes. But, uh, You're interrupting. But am I? Yeah. You're a behavioralist. 1787, the Constitutional Convention. I'm telling you folks, there's a lot in there you need to understand. And that's what I'm going to say to WFMU and everybody else. Are you okay? hopeful for the future? Yeah, I am hopeful because we are. I'm saying something like this on the radio today. You're never going to hear this on Democracy Now! telling us to get back to basics about how the money system operates. Do in you this believe country. in America? Yeah, of course. Do I do. Believe I believe in the, in the American people from the heartland. I really do. But are they militarizing those police to the point where when people wake up, will it be too late? Oh, well, you know what? I don't want to get into all this right now. Um, no, I don't think so. I'm glad. You got okay. a ray of optimism. I got to go. You're a nice guy. Take care, sir. All the best you. too. To you. Yeah. Take care. He was good, huh? And I interrupted him. Ken, do I interrupt sometimes? No, I think you're a fantastic interviewer. Kirsten you tells me I, I interrupt. I want to say, by the way, uh, heal, heal quick, baby. My, my wife took a bad fall this week and sustained a concussion. And I just want to say get well soon. I love you, Kirsten. We've got a radio show here. Uh, would you like to be on it? We need a female input on our radio show. Do you have just a moment? How about you, man? You want to be, come, come to WFMU in Jersey City, New Jersey. We've got an expensive camera. We're totally legitimate. You got to feel secure with that. What's your name? Nicholas. Nicholas, how old are you? 28. 28 years old. Where are you from originally? Virginia. From Virginia, Manassas, Warrenton? Actually, I'm from in between Warrenton and Manassas, from a little town called Noakesville. Yeah, see, I know uh, my brother Tim had right his, off Route 28. his first uh, radio job there in uh, in Warrenton, Virginia. Warrenton, yeah. yeah. That, that's, uh, I'm from Prince William County. I believe that's Fauquier County. Now, how did you end up here in Manhattan? Uh, I was a hobo, I guess. I, I kind of dropped out of college, and my mom died. So I... Uh, I started riding freight trains. You know, there I was living in Richmond, Virginia, and a lot of the kids that do ride freight trains come through for uh, Richmond because it's a major stop. Cigarette city. That's where they make a lot of cigarettes. Well, yeah, uh, Philip Morris has a headquarters. There. I quit smoking uh, over two weeks ago, but it, it's on my mind. You said I, Richmond, and I just oh, triggered I, me. Yeah. So you're you're riding the rails. It, it, something tells me it's not as romantic as it sounds. As long do the bulls find you those railroad the bulls? bulls? The cops pull you off at gunpoint if they know you're riding. But you know, more often than not, I actually I got more out of it than I ever thought I would. The, the scenery is beautiful. You see views that you would otherwise never see because the railroad tracks go where you know they don't always parallel to the highway. You know, I mean, there's nothing like I woke up one morning and I, we were going through the snow. Uh, uh, you know, the Blue Ridge Mountains, you know, through the Shenandoah Valley and up into the Blue Ridge Mountains. It was absolutely gorgeous. Almost heaven, yeah. West Virginia. No, that. Blue Ridge Mountains, <laughs> Shenandoah River. Remember that one, John Denver? Is that before your time? I was, uh, you know what? My, no, my, my mom was not a big John Denver fan. She didn't like him. Uh, yeah. Now you lost her. How did she die? 
Uh, cancer. I, I, you know, I've done a lot of interviews. Here. She was born in 1952, and she was she protested against the war in Vietnam, and like I, I feel like I got a lot of her spirit in me. You know, I, I want to say, I've interviewed a lot of people, and I've heard this story a lot. Young men like yourself who lost their mom, and it just, it just, you could barely deal with it. At the moment. Uh, or at that time, yeah, it was extremely difficult. I, uh, but um, what about your dad? Is he alive? Do you know your dad? Not well. I I haven't had contact with him in years. Did I? Did that make you? No, I no. It's just uh, I I you know. I I don't have any contact with him. <laughs> Do you wish you did? Did he leave when you were young? He left when I was like six months old, but honestly, you know, he, he said some really nasty things to me, like, you know, and once I got, you know, I grew up big when I was a child, so I actually ended up like punching him when I was 13, and that pretty much ended. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, kind of like, fuck you, dad, uh, and he was oh, like, don't even call me dad. And, gotta watch that swearing. Oh, That's okay. We hit the magic button, but next yeah. time. Now, uh... uh I guess a boy reaches a point where he grows to the point where he confronts his dad, and then that's where it ended. I, I wasn't mentally, I guess, uh, probably an adult, but, you know, physically I was large enough, and I was I got fed up with it, and, you know, that was that. And now, after that, my mom just raised me herself. Do you have love in your life? I do have a girlfriend, and she's what keeps me anchored. In Is she here in the city? Yes, we live in Queens, but she originally grew up... Um, on the east side. Do you have a job right now? No, I'm unemployed. What do you want to do, man? I'd love to finish my college degree, but uh, you know what? More than anything, in any capacity, I want to help people. What do you want to say? Here's how you can help. There's people in our listening audience, young men and women, maybe not even young, who struggled with that parental relationship. Maybe they lost a parent. I can't tell you that I did. I'm fortunate. What would you say to that person? What have you learned? What, what can you impart to them that might help? It's losing a loved one, especially a parent, is a club you never once belong to. And the only thing I can honestly say to anyone, I'm a humble person, I treat others as I would want to be treated. The only advice I can honestly give is to just count your blessings and, <laughs> and really know that, that it's, uh, you know, um, just call your mom when you when you have call the chance. Your mom. Call your mom. Call your dad. You what know? would you say to your mom if you could run that line right up to heaven right oh, now? Jesus, I love you. I love you. Is that what it comes down to in the end? It's all that matters, right? Yeah. Come close to this lens with me. Come on up here. What's... Tell the listeners right now. Give them a, a message of peace and love. You're talking right into their eyes. Hey, uh... I got peace and love. I guess that's really what it's all about. My mom did it in 1969, and I'm trying to carry it out here in 2014 in any way possible. So, you know, keep it nonviolent, but keep it uh, keep it real, and you stand up for yourself. You know, I mean, no apathy. You know, we really got to take care of ourselves because the government's not going to do it for us. You love America? I do, but I'd like to travel. Where do you want to go? I would like to travel to England uh, and other countries where immigration isn't such a big thing because demographically, uh, you know, the United States is afflicted with a lot of uh, diseases. For instance, bed bugs. Okay. So many people in New York have bed bugs. Now, I grew up on a farm in Virginia. I never had to worry about a bed bug. But because, because bed bugs are not native to North America, this is an example. But, you know, you got bed bugs working right now? Yeah, well, because um, people, somebody came. This is such a port city. You know, people coming from so many places. Now they got that the MERS stuff coming over from uh, Saudi Arabia. The people yeah. are dying from it. Right. It's scary, isn't it? It's, uh, well, in New York, it's, it's always been that, that, that port city, you know, where, where just, you know, what was it? A gang's in New York. He says, oh, there's 15,000 of us coming off the boats every day. That's not a gang, that's an army. Now I'm looking at my yeah. watch. So. We're going to have to move on because we only got an hour and we're live. Okay. All right, brother. Hey. Thanks for your time. No problem. All the best to you. You too. It's going to work out. You're good man yeah, yeah. get back to school if you can yeah okay cool take care peace. i'll give you my card yes please okay is, Here there it is. Way I, is there any way i could uh see myself or 
Uh, it'll be archived, right? This yeah. is station manager yeah. Ken. If you could get a shot of him, All right. uh, Ken. All right, we're going to yeah. take up. It, uh, how, he can see it. Uh, there's our website on there. Yeah, Check it out. Is oh. WFMU.org on there? Awesome. Yeah. Hey. Thank you, Matt. You. Hey, All right. Peace, guys. Peace, now, Ken. Thanks. Ken, you're a little camera shy, aren't you? No, I'm not camera shy. What's going on? Are we even on the yeah, air? Yeah, we've been on for a Am while Am I just now. yammering yeah, we into the, the first, brief? We missed the first 20 minutes, but uh, we're on the air. But you think we might be able to, to get the film and archive it yeah, later? Yeah, we're going to be able to archive the whole thing. Yes, yeah, there's some good folks, stuff. Folks missed uh, the Watford band. And Kyle, the original Kyle, interview. He right. was uh, touching, uh, he had some emotion going on. Yeah. Well, let's see what we can find. Let's see if we can get this guy right here. Let's see if he'll do an interview. Look, he's coming in. He's coming in. He's coming in. You're going to do it. I'm with WFMU in Jersey City, New Jersey. It's okay. a radio station, but okay. this is our first attempt at filming okay. and bringing in a visual aspect. Okay. You're a good-looking guy. We <laughs> wanted to get you for this. What's your name, man? Hey, my name is Sean. Sean? Yeah. Sean, how old are you? You got a little snow in the chin there. I have there. a lot of snow. I have a lot of snow everywhere. Look at those uh, <laughs> dreadlocks. Yeah. Now, if you didn't have those, how long would your hair be? Uh, I don't know. Take a long time? Are they real? Are they extensions? No, they're real. They're real. <laughs> yeah, they're now, real. is it dreadlocks? It's not cornrows. It's dreadlocks. No, dreads, yeah. Been around a long time. Yeah. I, I was tempted to, to say something, but it might be offensive. Like, have you seen, I see the NFL and the athletes okay. in recent years have okay. started to wear uh, dreadlocks. Do okay. you think that's inspired a lot of young people to follow suit? No. Uh, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> no, I think it's a, it's a bigger cultural thing. I don't really think the NFL really is inspiring. Do you even like the NFL? <laughs> no. You know, that's stereotyping, isn't it, no, to, us, to assume. No, I actually do, and people wouldn't, wouldn't think I do. Okay. But uh, what do you do here in New York? I'm a therapist. You're a therapist? Yeah. Do you say what kind of therapist, or is there a occupational or or, um, or mental health? It's, it's mental health, yeah. And and uh, in what capacity? Uh, like a nice office, or or. or? Uh, I don't do private practice. I am. I deliver very. How can I say? It? I, re I basically tell tell people the results of their HIV tests, and I do counseling with that. You do. Yeah. So heavy stuff. You you tell them the results, and uh, I remember a point in my life. I used to be in rock and roll okay. bands, and I lived kind of a wild, crazy life. <laughs> okay. And I reached a point where mm -hmm. I, I got to do this, okay. and it was one of the most traumatic things I ever waited for. Was that HIV test result? Yeah. The question I would ask you that people probably wonder is, yeah. what is it like to tell someone yes? Uh, and, and, and people like to think that it's not around anymore, or that they're safe now. It definitely is around. Talk about that a little bit. No, it's, it's still around. It's more I, I think it's more prevalent than other because a lot of people don't realize that it's still an issue. Um, but I think when just telling people, a lot of people that I tell already have an idea that something is wrong. Um, but there are a couple of people that I told it was really, really shocking. But it kind of gives them the opportunity to kind of rethink how they're living their lives. And I've noticed that they actually do make positive changes afterwards. Now, is the, the prognosis for someone who's diagnosed uh, positive better than it used to be? Much, much, much better. I think people think, well, if I get it, I can take the drug cocktail and I'll, I'll, I'll just live a natural life. Uh, actually, the, if, you are, if you get on medication right away, um, the, your lifespan is really not that different than a normal lifespan. But it all depends on you taking care of yourself. So, yeah, it's really not like how it used to be. Are you no. HIV positive? <laughs> That's such a personal question, but no, I'm not. Okay, <laughs> well, I thought it might have led you <laughs> okay. to, to your profession. No, no, no. Uh, what else is interests you? Are you pay attention to politics? No, I don't watch TV. You don't? <laughs> I don't watch now, TV. see, I get, I get so bugged and bent out of shape. Mm -hmm. My wife tells me, you gotta stop uh, watching that uh, okay. uh, uh, Lawrence O'Donnell, the MSNBC, the <laughs> CNN. I, I get all bent out of shape. Uh, and you just with, withdrew from it. Yeah, it's not interesting. But you're aware that there's serious problems. Yeah. There, there are serious problems in the world, but I don't necessarily think that those are always focusing on the news. Um, and plus, I don't know any therapist that watches the news. <laughs> Is it bad for you? It's not Are bad. they just playing with our minds to well, agitate us? It, no, 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 I don't think that. But people tell me terrible things all day. I don't need to hear anymore. <laughs> oh, that's right. So, so I watch cartoons. I've thought home. about that too. Psychiatrists, yeah. psychologists, therapists such as you. 
Does it wear on you? Is it hard not to take it home from the office? Yeah, but that happens to work. Like that's what you learn. Do people um, attach to you too? Like yeah, uh, yeah. Fall in love with you or things like um, that. That hasn't happened yet. Transference. <laughs> yes, isn't transference. That? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but Pretty all, good. Huh? Just, yeah, good. <laughs> it all does happen. All of it. People hate you. People love you. People think that you're your son or their father. And Do you like your profession? Yeah, yeah. I just I've only been doing it for three months. So I just graduated, so it's pretty cool. What's your message of peace and love to our listeners all over the world on WFMU? Oh, that's such a big deal. Look right into that lens. <laughs> They're looking at you now. Um, I think that I think the most important thing is not to believe what you think um, and just realize that there's always many, many different perspectives to one story. What about the, the stigma of... of of seeing a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a mm. therapist. It's, it's, it seems like not so prevalent as it used to be, but there is that, I don't want to say shame, but yeah. some people feel a stigma like, oh, if I go there, then I'm, I'm crazy. Yeah. Now, what do you say to that person who's maybe thinking about seeking help? Well, anyone that goes to a therapist's office is probably not crazy. <laughs> the crazier people can't even make it to the office. Um, and I think that just, I think that Seeing a therapist is really, really, really healthy. Um, and I don't really think you have to be completely sick to do it, and you don't have to do it for the rest of your life. It's kind of a luxury, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I, but the thing is that therapy is not as intense as people make it. <laughs> You're not going to be crying every session. It can be fun. No but... electroshock or anything? No, like no, that. no, no. I have a therapist. My therapist makes me laugh, and it's cool. <laughs> now, this is my card okay. associated with my radio show. Okay, cool. You must be kind of excited to get it. Yeah, this is actually cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank you very and much. And I really enjoyed talking to you. Okay. All the best to you. Okay, You're thanks. a very impressive person. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> good luck. Good luck. How about that, huh? Fantastic so people. we're off again. How are we? <laughs> Should I just stop? Yeah. Okay.